so you admit it to causing Angela's death, but I also would like to put the fault of Maria's death on you and Joe Proctor. Now, I don't know if you want to, like, defend oh, yourself, uh, but I feel like you indirectly caused the death of these characters. And just to refresh your memory, uh, you know, with Maria, <laughs> you know, you pretty much still was going to have her testify knowing that, you know, Tommy and them was, like, out for blood, and you came to her apartment, and, you know, it just... Yeah, and I Tommy like was her. hiding in the closet. Right. Yeah. You got her killed. Idiot. Yeah. You got yeah. her killed. Yeah. yeah. And well, I, I definitely am going to blame you for Joe. Uh, you revealed uh, to Maria that he had, that basically that Joe Proctor was going to testify against Ghost. So it, I just feel like you're just in the mix. You're the common. Oh, you know what? You know who I really am responsible for? Who? Joe's wife. Yeah, that, you know what? See, I wasn't even gonna blame you for that one. Oh no, for sure. Yeah, Proctor's wife, like, oh, a hundred percent. Like that one's on me. Now, Greg is not on me, but I feel like I could have, if I believed Greg, because Greg was coming to me, going like, "Dude, all this stuff's happening." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever, dude. Stop, stop smoking, you know, meth or whatever." And I probably could have done something there. I also feel like maybe if I played things a little slightly differently with. With Dre. Okay, and let's just say you killed all the power characters. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like you're responsible. I'm like you Kevin Bacon. This is like six. It's like six degrees of separation. Like you could all deaths, all deaths lead back to Cooper Sacks, right? They do. So <laughs> Sacks, you started out going real like you was going out real sad. Okay, at one point, I was like, oh, man, my man Sats going out sad here. So as you was walking uh, towards the uh, nightclub truth that night in mm -hmm. season six, um, what was going through your mind? Were you like, I'm about to go kill him. I'm killing him right now. What was going through your mind as you was walking through, walking to truth that night? Yeah, you know, that was like, I really love that. Shanna Stein directed that. And I really liked the the energy that came out of that because I just think it was really sort of contemplative. I feel like Cooper Sacks was kind of faced with he had to I had to confront as the character, I had to confront all of these things that we're talking about that were kind of like ultimately laid on his plate. Culminating in the fact that he knows that Ghost is the man responsible for all this stuff and can do nothing about it right Ooh. and and so and i had lost my job and so he was i was a failure and so like not only did i lose my job like and not just like hey i'm sorry i'm sorry we're cutting it back it wasn't that it was like you effed up and you're a piece of shit and, and you're, you're facing your job time. yeah and i'm facing jail time and you're responsible for all of these deaths. You suck. And, and it was all of that. And in the, in the hopes and dreams of my parents and my family and the weight of being a sax, which may not mean anything to the audience, but it means something to him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and so, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm literally there. I mean, they're in my house, in my apartment, drinking, drinking whiskey and get my gun. And I'm like, this, I'm ending this. I thought you were going to kill yourself. I'm ending this. Yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I wanted the... I wanted this yeah. to be like, oh my God, is he going to kill himself? But then it turns into, well, unfortunately, you know, when, sometimes when people go on a killing spree, you're like, can't you just start with yourself? You know, right. The, the, the right. ones that end with themselves, like, oh, and then they killed themselves. It's like, just start there. Just start there. But was Cooper Sacks was going to go on a little bit of a spree, but he, but somebody beat him to the, beat him to the punch. Thankfully, kept, kept me from being, Tariq actually saved me. That's actually the only so, <laughs> saved me. And really quick, before we move on, I'm reading the comments. They said they're going to play this live, and they're going to convict you next season on your confession. <laughs> 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 but um, so I do want to know, um, just, you know, as a fan, did they tell you all who shot Ghost? Like, were, was it like a surprise to you as it was to us? 
or did you all know as you were filming who was the person that shot Ghost? No, they they filmed everybody shooting Ghost. Okay. They filmed everybody shooting Ghost from Paz to Tariq to Tommy to Tasha to me to Dre. It was like everybody took a shot at Ghost. We all did it. Like we all filmed it. And we That's didn't know. Cool. We didn't really know what, you know, who it was going to be. But you didn't be. know who they were going to choose. Not, not until we got, because they had, we had filmed that, if you remember. That was episode 10. Six right. times. And so they didn't want, they didn't, and you know, the last five episodes were kind of a, a mini season of their own. And they didn't want, they didn't want us all knowing and the crew knowing and everybody knowing what was happening six months out. I love the point of view thing. That was great. Yeah. And so they wanted, yeah. they wanted to have the option to, sh you know, to, sh to, to spring it on us. Not obviously as the, as we got into like 213, 214 or six, 613, 614. Um, it became clear where it was headed and we were all like, oh, okay, well, it's Tariq. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think initially in 610, they wanted us to kind of not know. Okay. All right. So uh, season six kind of leads us into Power Book Ghost, you know, Power, Power Book 2 Ghost, the story. So obviously, Sat says, will you are the most unethical <laughs> u.s attorney ever and you have about nine lives clearly yeah what? you yeah so after, oh god after oh my god job, how dare you you got rehired is there any logical reason of after you got away like you kind of like was free from this life why on god's green earth would Sats want to still try to prosecute any of the St. Patrick's? It's like, why are you still obsessed with this family? Ghost is dead. Well, according to us, Ghost is dead. So, like, why? Dog with a bone. You know, dog with a bone where he's just like, I think he's spent, it's like a career, you know, it's like it cost him his career. And I feel like that, I feel like he just he can't, I can't let it go. I um, see. It's kind of like the one, you know what? It's similar to, it's similar to, this is going to sound funny, but it's a little bit similar to how Ghost and, Ghost and Angie's relationship, where the show starts with that kind of, one, the one that got away a little yeah. bit. And even though, the smartest thing for Ghost to do would be to just continue on with his life. He's killing the game. He's killing it. He's going legit. He's got the wife, the kids, the money, the, the, the clubs. Everything's working. And then he complicates it by going back to, to this thing that got away from him, right? Uh -huh. And that, that, becomes, that becomes the thread that he can't stop pulling that ends up eventually costing him his life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I think that for Cooper, uh, except for the last part, um, for Cooper, it's the same thing. This is kind of like the thing that it's not like a first love, but it's it's like this his big case, the thing that was going to make him, the thing that was going to put me on the map as a prosecutor, and um, and and something that I could go home to my family and be like, look at my trophy, I won, and and I and and I I fail, and I don't just fail. I fail miserably. Miserably. And, and so it's like, I can't, I cannot let that go. Yeah. I can't let it go. So it does seem as if Sachs has not learned from his mistakes of being an overzealous no. uh, <laughs> prosecutor. So now he involves his niece, Riley, you know? So it's just like, we have a, a mini Sachs now, right? So you couldn't have possibly thought that was going to be a good idea. So... It's like, hasn't Sats learned that every time he tries to do things off the record, dirty, it always backfires, right? Like, I, I don't oh. know if Sats is knowing this. <laughs> so, seeing Tariq blow Sats up on the stand was oh absolutely God. priceless. Was it? Like, 
it was priceless like what was going through your mind during that moment to like Tariq like yeah but I saw you like did you not like think that anyone saw you that night yeah go ahead and empty the bottle because we want to talk about it Zach did you not think that anyone saw you so like when when Tariq just blew your spot up what was going through your mind right then and there you know I think I had as a, as the as sax, I had so many things I was balancing at that at that moment. I had a deal with Davis, right? I had a situation with Tamika. I had, um, I have I have uh, Ott, who's putting pressure on me. The DNC guy that's putting pressure yeah. on me, mm -hmm. Mark Feuerstein, who's great. Um, and then I have this judge who's got going like. What what the, what what's happening here? Right. So I've got <laughs> so I've got what? all that. I've got I've got literally I'm getting like, you know, laser eyes from all these different directions. And I think it just and oh, and by the way, my niece is also there, right? Right. Go, going and like, she's oh just my like, God, like yeah, she's like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm I'm literally I'm just it's it's a caged animal emotionally like obviously he tries to cover it and go like your honor <laughs> i mean come on seriously. i mean what's what is he talking about this is ridiculous but uh, but but it's a caged animal going like uh you know um i thought i had this all figured out i thought i had it worked out and now it's blowing up in my face um it was awful and and he just you know he just turns it on me because i didn't he had information i didn't know he had yeah, that that I thought that was the best part, you know, us knowing like, oh, I hope you know that he know about that video. So, yeah. I mean, you're Who literally drugged my drink? Who drugged Say my what? drink, Mr. Sax? Who drugged my drink? I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, like, yeah, who did that? And like, you're literally on lifeline number 10 at this point. So do you think that going forward that all of your misconduct will catch up to you. Yeah. Yeah. I think in that moment, it's like, I think, I think that he's just like at a zero. Um, and it becomes clear. It becomes clear because literally right after that, uh, John Ott, who seemingly has so much power, he comes in and he's like, tells the judge to get out. Right. Yeah. Like you can't a judge out of her changer. Out of yeah, her changer. Get out of the so chamber. Like, okay. You know, unless you want to be moved to Pacoima or where, whatever he says. And then he's like, and he turns to me and he's like, you're out, you're done, you're fired. And he's like, and. For the third then, time. Yeah, yeah. He just like, he just like, boom, 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 boom. And I have, and, and, and it's like, I'm sitting there going like, uh, uh, you know, my life is over as I know yeah. it. And crawling back home and my brother's like, hey, you want to like have a shitty job at my hedge fund? And I'm like, oh my God, my life. <laughs> my life. So we did get to see a lot more of your family. And this is something that I know everybody wants to know. What on earth does Uncle Nancy mean? Please explain to the people. Because, you know, everybody in my power group was like, oh, my God, that's a transgender. Like, what? Okay, so can you please explain Uncle Nancy <laughs> to us, please? <laughs> People go so hard. It's so funny, man. It's funny because people people get a little piece of information and then it goes to like it goes to like a hundred. Like, oh yeah, yeah they was like, this oh, was that's a five. transgender, y'all. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so, so here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. Hold on. Okay, well, let, let me let me sit mine too. Hold on. Here's the deal. So Cooper was. A younger brother. Okay. I have two older sisters, parents that are that don't give a shit, but that have tons of money. And so my sisters would like dress me up and you know put makeup on me and put me in dresses and stuff. And I'm you know I was a little kid, and so they would they would that's kind of when that energy started uh -huh. um, that I just never could outgrow and then also i don't think it helps that like my little brother is like bigger than i am and probably more handsome than i am and like more successful than i am and it's just like I, i'm surrounded by success and beauty and i'm in the middle going like fuck you guys like i 
you know, probably the smartest of them all, but just not, not fully engaged in the privilege in all the privilege that comes with being a sax, right? Because mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting, very interesting, something to think about, about Cooper Sachs is that he didn't, he's a public, he, he's a public servant, basically. Like I'm working, I'm, a, you know, I'm working for the district. I'm a, I'm a U.S. attorney, which maybe they make 150 K a year or something like that, which some people might go like, oh, that's a ton of money. But like in New York, that's not a ton of money. And, and as a lawyer, you like, you see the money that Davis is making. Right. And you see, and you see how, you see how Tamika's life changed when she stopped, when she got fired. Right. From, from, and the next time you saw her, she had this incredible office and she had like these beautiful wigs and the like incredible outfits <laughs> and stuff. It's like, oh shit. It's like, th there's no money in what I'm doing. So yeah. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm, Cooper has something to prove. Prove, right, right. You know, yeah. and it's not about money. It's not about success. It's something to prove. And, um, and the rest of my family is just going like, Cooper, just chill, okay? Just enjoy it. Like, it's all here for you. Just enjoy it. Like, get the, t the money's there and the success is there. All you have to do is take it. And I'm going like, fuck you guys. Like I'm after, <laughs> I'm after something, you know? Absolutely. So, so Sax, you weren't only obsessed with the St. Patrick's. You also had this little weird obsession with Tommy. So now that you think weird? Tommy is dead, no, yeah, you had no obsession with Tommy. So now that you think Tommy is dead and Tasha is basically in witness protection and Tariq is pretty much unstoppable, does Sax finally give up? maybe on on the tommy front just like you know because it's like it's like you know ghost is dead tommy is dead in the wind yeah yeah dead right tasha is in witness protection and Tariq is not smart to go after him at this point so it's like do you think you know without giving anything away do you think that you know sex maybe we'll just give up on this weird obsession I mean, no. <laughs> Probably not. No. So... It's like I said. That's like I said. It's kind of the unrequited. It's, it's funny because I'm just now thinking of this. I never thought of this before. But it's a little bit similar to, like I said earlier, the, the ghost and Angela relationship where there's, you know, the themes of the, of the story deal with like kind of an unrequited or an unfulfilled passion, right? Something right. that could have, something that could have been, and not being able to let something go. Because if Ghost, if Ghost could let go, Ghost would be alive, right? And yeah. he couldn't let go. And same with Angela. If Angela could let go, she would be alive. No, no, she would be alive. It wasn't for you, but okay. <laughs> And that, and and me, but um, so my, but my point is, is like in regards to Cooper Sacks, I think it's a similar sort of thing, and it's and it's really a comment on humanity, right? Like we can't once we get our mindset on something, right? Even even if we move on in life, it's the thing when you wake up in the middle of the night that you're thinking about, and I think Cooper Sacks wakes up in the middle of the night and goes, Tommy, ghost. He sees that board. I see that board with their faces. Yeah, on it's it. they're gonna be haunting you forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now that Sax has got fired again, this is like your third time being fired. Yeah. Davis has offered you a job, a better one than your brother's shitty job that he offered you. So any predictions of how this new relationship is gonna be with Davis? Because we saw how you know, you felt that Davis crossed you, you know, and we all know that he technically really didn't. But what do you predict this, this new working relationship to be like between you and Davis? Because this well, is going to be an interesting one because both of y'all are very unethical. So take it easy. You need to take okay. it easy. I'm not going <laughs> to hand you your ass. Um, <laughs> let me, I'm going to say this is twofold. This is twofold. I'm going to answer as Shane. And then my answer is sex. Okay. Um, as Shane, I got to say, Method Man, working with Method Man is like, 
such a breath of fresh air. I mean, he's such a great dude and he, he brings so much incredible energy and um, vibes to the, to the set. And it's such a pleasure to work with. And, mm -hmm. and I feel, I feel like the dynamic and the chemistry that we have is like so on point. And he wants to, you know, he wants to show up and work and he wants to like find stuff. And, and I, and I, and he, you know, listen, he won an award, an NAACP award for, for acting yes. his ass off and for bringing it. And, um, and, and I'm so happy for him because he's like, he deserves it. He's, he's honestly, he's such a, he's such a great man. And, um, and so I, I love working with him. Let me just say that. That's Shane. Cooper with Cooper, I think, I think it was like, I had on one hand, I had, I had two opportunities. I had on one hand going and admitting defeat and working with my brother, which was like a padded cell with a cush life, all the money I would need and basically just become a sax, become a, this sort of privileged sax lifestyle. Right. And on the other hand, I have somebody who kind of is my savior in this moment. Meth, you know, um, Davis McLean comes to me and is like, hey, come over here, make some money, which I don't think really sells. That's not what sells Cooper Sacks. He doesn't care about the money. But but when when Davis McLean is like, come do work with me, bring your files with you, and maybe we can like, maybe we can like work together, make, make, some, make some stuff happen. I think that energy, I think Cooper's like, oh, that's so. He's about to get you in some trouble. I mean, yeah, but, but, you know, when he has, I have these two, these two choices in front of me. You can't help it. It's, well, who knows? Who knows what I'm going to do, right? But, right. Um, but those two choices are vastly different paths for for Cooper and in, in terms of his my future you know okay well uh the last couple of questions I have are actually for Shane so oh. sex it was Hold nice <clears throat> talking to you <laughs> let, me, let me put on the I want to uh get Shane back on the main line before we bring in the fan questions I just have a couple more questions um for Shane um so what can we expect next from Sax? Because I feel like it's going to be amazing to see where Courtney takes your character because apparently she loves your character. I mean, you've been here for eight years. I mean, you've outlasted most of the OG. She loves you, okay? So uh, where, like, where do and you I see love Sax? Her. Yeah, you have managed to defeat death and all types of things. So where do you see Shay? Uh, I'm sorry, not Shane. Where do you see Sax going in the future? Well, do you think you have a long lived future? Well, here's what I want. Here's what I want. Here's what I want. Okay. Here's what I want for Sax. I want Sax to win. Just to win. Just Yeah, he's taken a lot of L's. I've taken so many L's. Yeah. I can agree with that. I mean, can you tell me? Can, let me ask you this. I've been on the show for well, seven seasons that you've seen. But now I've been on the show for eight years. Can you tell me a single triumph? Like a win, like an like a like a W. Can you can you can you remember a, a, a W? You really want to know my W for you? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear it. You in love? Your sex scene. I was really happy oh. that they gave you a sex scene. <laughs> I was like, they gonna stop treating Sax like he's this lonely man, okay? Like, anybody <laughs> who knows me can tell you that you are one of my favorite characters. Like, I ride for Sax. So I'm like, y'all gonna give my man a love interest or something, because Angie turned you down. You know? I know, which was total BS. She, by the right. way, she's missing out. Yeah, she missed out. I mean, you got her killed, but... I gave it the opportunity. <laughs> but honestly, you know, I was like, you know, hey, that was a win for my guy. Like, all right, I like that. I like that. That is. Yeah, a, that I don't is think a w. Took, I don't think you got many wins. I'm sorry. That was <laughs> that was that was funny. That was a that was like the finale of of season one, right? Uh, the sex scene. Yeah. 
No, uh, oh, power yeah. book. Uh, okay, a yeah, power I book. thought you meant power. I was like, yeah. No, 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 okay. of, of, of ghosts. Yeah, of, of ghosts. ghosts, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, right before you found out that uh, Tommy's trying to kill Tasha. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, do you have any funny behind the scenes stories that you kind of just want to tell us about? Just something, just something that you just want to give us, clue us in on, you know, because we definitely well, love to, to see how it is behind the scenes. Well, I'm going to, this is going to be general, but first of all, everybody pretty much all along, everybody pretty much gets along, loves each other. There's a lot of laughing. There's a lot of um, great energy. There always has been. And, you know, I worked a lot with Leela, with Song, with Gray, with Andy Bean, um, and and David Fumero, who is who was uh, played uh, Mike Sandoval. Mm -hmm. Just just great great people, and um, and also uh, yeah, it just the, the Ty Jones who played Donovan. We had a lot of fun together. Um, Everybody's everybody gets along. There's a lot of humor, a lot of fun. And um the one thing that's interesting is that, you know, we have transitioned uh like by the way, every production has. Because you know, we have lived through pre Me Too movement, really. And mm -hmm. in, in, into po you know, politically correct. Like in, into like, hey, you gotta be careful, you gotta watch what you say, you gotta watch your humor, you gotta watch your and so so that has been an interesting transition to kind of everybody's everybody's a little bit more like <clears throat> I'm a I'm a professional I'm a professional, and so things have shifted a little bit because you know there was a little bit more freedom eight years ago, um, mm -hmm. pre Harvey Weinstein, um, and so that's that's the one thing I would say is that and by the way I'm not saying that's a bad thing I I, right. I I'm just saying that 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 is definitely a very clear thing where you felt you felt you could kind of, you had a little bit more freedom with your friends to kind of goof around and tell jokes and be a little bit profane or whatever early on. And now everybody's a little bit more aware and kind of like, could this, you know, you, you think about what you're going to say before you say it, which, which, which is good. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. No, that's a good thing. It's maybe, it's maybe not as fun, but, but it's, but it's <laughs> more appropriate and more, more professional. Okay. So um, I do want to know what is it like working with legends like Fifty Cent and Mary J. Blige? Cause, like literally, you know, like a lot of us grew up listening to them. So kind of want to yeah. know, like, what is it like working with them? Well, you know, it's funny seeing the the inner workings of the the little window that I have into the inner workings of of Fifty um, is so so inspiring to me because okay. he's he's like um see, first of all he's such an incredible entrepreneur and he's his energy is just like unstoppable and and he's but he's also like approachable and funny and and uh wise like i don't know if you've read his book but like his book is is you know i haven't Hustle harder. What is it? Hustle. What is it? Yeah, it's just it's a great it's a great book. I've read it twice. It's uh, he's his life is insane, and he's but he's and and I'm I'm outing him slightly by saying this, but he's he's actually humble. He actually, um, really I think he really knows the impact he has and is and and is, everything is by design. Even yeah. even the shit even the shit talking and all this stuff like all that's by design you know he's just like a he's a genius he and is I, and I, I wish yeah. I wish that I could like you know it's funny because on Instagram like right now you're lucky that I'm drinking because I'm a little more free with my tongue here but but like for me to post something because I'm 45 right so for me to post something I'm like really considered I'm going okay I'm this is gonna be here forever like people are gonna um, and I, I hem and I haw and I, I work, I work it out. And I'm like, how, exactly. How do I want to say this? Is, is this offensive? Could this be construed as, and it takes me forever to like craft something that I feel is like on point and 50 is like free spirit and he'll blow, he'll blow shit up. I love 50. Hey shit. Some, sometimes him. he'll blow up. Sometimes, sometimes he'll blow up power. 
It'd be like, boom, blow up power. And then he's like, yeah, I was I'll just like, mess when with he you. posted the, the spoiler, I was like, what is he doing? That's what I'm saying. Like he, but, but he's, he's a genius. He knows what he's doing. Like all that stuff he is, does. all that stuff is, is like on point. And, and he's just a great dude. Like he's just a great, he's a great director. He directed, um, was it 603? And he's, he's just, I mean, he's, he's an inspiration to me. And he's not what you'd think. Like, you'd think, like, you'd be really intimidated and because and, he seems like this sort of menacing, you know, he's got a, he's got a, a reputation. Yeah. Right? I had a chance to talk to him. Oh, um, you did? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, during yeah. the end of ACV Image Awards, I talked to him, Method, and Courtney. And they're all very sweet. Very sweet. I mean, I mean, I'm so lucky. They're just, you're right. The three of them, the three of them are just great human beings all three of them um yeah so what did you what else was it what, what, what oh it was like mary that? mary j Blige. Mary, she's definitely well, a legend well well the truth is is i haven't really worked with mary much because oh, our okay. characters don't really cross paths but um but she i'm a huge huge fan of hers and um and I probably get a little bit uncomfortable around Mary, to be honest, because I'm like, oh my god, that's, that's Mary. That's that's Mary. You know what I mean? It's a little, it's a little um, intimidating to be uh, in her presence. I mean, she's just like she's she's such a legend, and um, and yet she's really like she comes across really gentle and really really present, and um, and I think she, that she's incredibly talented. Um, and and she deserves all the incredible success that she's having. I I, I love I love that she's on our show, you know. Yeah. And I, I, and I like hope she, she definitely I brings hope, something. I hope that I get the chance to to work with her because um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you you're working right? with Davis, so I mean, you never know, you never know. So. Um, do you have a favorite sax line? Because I can tell you that mine is hands down during Angela's funeral when Ghost shows up <laughs> and you're just like, damn, the nerve of this guy. You was like, he's OJ. Like, I don't know. I just thought that was so funny. Like, <laughs> like so do you like, do you add this or do they actually write this for you? Do you add this type of like, you know, comedy? Um, I add, I add some things here and there, okay. but, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't, do, I didn't write that liner at all, but I had, I had a few things here and there, but I'm going to give a hundred percent of the credit to the writers because anything, anything that I add is out of the energy in the, and the crafting of the scene that's already there. I might okay. just kind of, I might just kind of put a, put a little bit of a, a spin on it. Um, and 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 anything that I would that I that I would add to a scene would be already kind of indicated by the writers. You know what I mean? Okay, so like you I'm, I'm not somebody. Just, uh, I'm not like going to sit there and like. Well, no, I ad lib, but I'm not going to a little bit, but I'm not going to sit there and like improv a scene. I I would ad lib something that would kind of add maybe a little bit of like a huh to a to a moment. Um, okay. But in terms of a favorite line. Hmm. <laughs> Probably have a lot. Yeah. The OJ line was classic. The OJ line's good. Um I, I have a lot of line I have a lot of like one liners kind of to Angela that were pretty great. You know? I mean I, I love I love the fact that Cooper comes in and and hits on Angela, you know, and yeah. and it's like, you know, well people pro people process grief differently and you know, in case you're you know I'm just next door if you want to <laughs> like Greg, Greg, <laughs> right. Greg has you just died. Something else. Greg something has else. just her boyfriend, former boyfriend has just died. We've just buried him. And I'm like, listen, you know he what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just right there, baby girl. But listen, I'm here for you if you want some. And she's like, I don't want some. And I'm like, well, well, well okay, hold on. Take it easy. In case, in case you want some, I'm yeah, a little too soon, sad. <laughs> but I so, love it. I love that he tried it. 
He tried it. I, he I love tried. It. He did. So you guys are it. filming for season two right now, correct? Yeah. 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 So I don't know how much you can say or what you're allowed to say, but do we have like an expected release date of season two? It's okay if you can't to. answer that. No, no, no. The, the truth is, is because of COVID, COVID effed up our first season. Um, in terms of how we were we were going to originally release it, right? So mm -hmm. it was it was, you know, we because we did five and five, I think, and right, was, yeah, and that was never the design. But because of COVID, we got shut down for like five or six months, um, and it's the same with you know with this. It's uh, it just the season has shifted the time of yeah. it because it always I feel like we always used to start kind of airing in. What was the it, summer, June, June. Mm -hmm. yeah, like June, and but that was always like we'd always finished filming in like March, Jeff, end of February, into in the beginning of March, and then they would have like another three months to kind of get through post production, and we were off doing other things, and what when they were like doing post production, um, and then they would start airing in what September or something, right? Is that right? June, July, August, September. Yeah, June. And no, then I'm we sorry. Would, we would start. We would start filming in September. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. It would start airing in June, and and I feel like our schedules just kind of completely shifted because of COVID. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, I don't know because I don't know if they're going to try and get everything done so that they can just kind of do ten in a row like we typically do. We or would if they're love gonna, that. Uh, yeah, I would too. Or if they're going to go like, all right, well, these five are done let's try and get those out as quickly as we can to kind of give the audience a taste and then we'll do the other five later. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. Okay. I wish we did, um, I wish we did, 20, I I wish was, we did 20 episodes. I, we would love longer. I was reading the comments and also, I also had this question, but do you think sex needs a spinoff? Cause a lot of people say you deserve one. I mean, I, you literally are OG. You've been here for a long time. You have a story. We want to know sex. I'm, I'm like, I love that whoever wrote that, the fact that you're, that you're saying that to me makes me, warms my heart. Um, I, I don't think that Sax is going to get a spinoff and I don't think that it's necessarily warranted. You know, Sax is like a peripheral character, but he's, um, it's, it's, um, I'm so privileged to be, to continue with the storyline i what i would love to do is to what would be cool is if i bounced into some of the sp other spinoffs like if i if i managed to kind of like bounce over into tommy's show i was say i want you in tommy's bounce into, you know obviously yeah, I, can't I, I, can't bounce into, I can't bounce into canaan because that's like you know a whole yeah, different you, deal you didn't exist but <laughs> yeah but 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 with the or Tommy's show or or that you know, that could be, that's actually very, a legitimate situation, which, which very, very well could happen. Um, so, um, I love being, uh, you know, I think Sax stirs the pot. Yeah. You know, he stirs okay. the pot. Well, I hope Courtney does decide to give you a spinoff. I think you would have a great one. I'm going to um, send her a message right now. Yeah. She might be watching. You never know. Um, we do have a few questions in the box um, from some fans. Um, hey. uh, Jazz. Uh, Jazzy Bakes 89 says, have you ever been starstruck by anyone on the power set or at any time in your life? Love sats on power. Excellent work. Um, have I ever been starstruck? You know, the very first movie I ever did I was, I mean, starstruck is a big, that's a struck is a big word. Cause it kind of makes you, makes it sound like you're like, I, uh, I can't function. But, and that wasn't necessarily true, but the very first movie I did happened to be Saving Private Ryan, which was the Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. And it was like a big, a big movie. Right. And so I was sitting by myself underneath the tent, just like in a, you know, one of the director's chairs. And, and um, Steven Spielberg came up and sat, sat next to me, just he and I under, in a tent. 
and he just started like BSing with me for like 15 minutes. And in that moment, like I, I was talking, but I was kind of outside my body going like, I'm, this is, I'm talking to Steven Spielberg. I mean, I was like, I was maybe 20 years old at the time. Um, but I was like, going, Oh my God, like, this is it. Like I've, I've, this, I've made it. Like I'm talking to Steven Spielberg and he's just kind of, it's casual. He's like my uncle. It's like, we're just hanging out. Oh my God. He likes me. He's going to use me in all of his movies. Oh my God, I'm going to be famous. And none of that <laughs> happened. But, but that, that moment was pretty intense. Okay, and we do have a request that just came oh, in. Oh, let's, uh, let's see somebody. I want to see somebody. Yeah, are we, are we we're going to see somebody? Specs the Great. Oh, my God, um, this is so let's exciting. See. Hopefully, it lets him accept the invite. Oh, there my God. There we are. What's Hi, up? What's your name? My name is Jose. Jose. Hi, Jose. Uh, so what question do you have for uh, Sax? Oh, what's up, Sax? How are you? How are you, Jose? Nice You're to meet you, man. You're my favorite character on Paris. Oh, well, even if it's not true, no, I yes. owe him 20 bucks for uh, saying it. Thank you for saying part, it. My partner doesn't like me on Paris, right? Nope. Who's that? <laughs> what's, his, what's, what's his name? His name's Matt. Matt? Matt, you Matt. suck. I suck. I know <laughs> I do. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jose, what you got? Yeah, so my... <laughs> You're so rude. <laughs> So my cousin, cousin thinks you're a sleaze bar and a weasel, which you are on that show, but that's what I like about you. No, in fairness, in fairness, my, my, my beef is with the writing, not with the writers, not with the acting, with the writers. I think they, they made your uh, character to be more comical than anything else. And, and by the way, uh, I, I'm going to call you Sax because I'm a lawyer, so... That's why I think it's kind of a little, you know, just unrealistic. Oh, oh, oh so, so you're pulling, you're, the, right. you're pulling the like, you're pulling the like, I'm a real lawyer. You, you're not a real lawyer sort well, of thing. Well, it's not that. Me. It's not that. I'm saying you're a great actor, but the writers suck. <laughs> I don't think so. You know, in all fairness, one of our writers, one of our writers is a lawyer. And like, and we have somebody kind of checking over like whenever we whenever we go in to do anything in court um we have somebody that's there analyzing us and going nope they wouldn't do that we couldn't get away with that and we we push I the limit that. I you're probably non-stop through every episode no yeah, that would never happen <laughs> well i well you're you're probably right that we we try to push the envelope a little bit but we have we have a, co a consultant who comes in and is like you would this is where you would be this is how you would ask the question that's inappropriate they would never do this they would never do that so we 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 try to be as true to um um you know things as we can but like let's be honest at the end of the day we're we're, we're we're creating television if we and if we were and if we were just if we were being like an, if I we were like it. if we were c-span just showing like an actual court you know case It'd be boring. it would be boring as hell yeah so so we push the limits, but forgive us, Matt. Well, forgive us, Matt. If you really want to get into it, it's more about the, uh, you know, your your side deals with uh, the the you know with the uh, Powers lawyer there and the uh, black. The, what's I, I don't know what his name is, but uh, you know, all your side deals. No, no, no real New York attorney, uh, you know, would do that. No state attorney would do. That. Well, because right. you because you Matt, you've never met Cooper Sachs, bro. <laughs> Cooper Sachs. <laughs> Until now. Until now. <laughs> I don't okay. need your like. I don't need your. This is the real world. I can. Jose. Jose. Okay. So my question got. is no, not a question. I just said I was because I like sex. I like your character, and I saw everybody having sex scenes, and I was like, hey, hold on. How come sex doesn't have a sex scene yet? Everybody's here getting getting the pleasure, but for sex is left in the dust. And then when I saw you have a sex scene, I was like, yes, you go, sex. That's what's up. You're the man. Dun, 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 hey, you got it. Dun, 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 dun. Bye. Jose, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, man. So I want to thank you so much, Shane, for joining me tonight. It's been fun. We've been on here for almost two hours. I told you 30 minutes. I'm sorry. But it's kind of hard when, you, when you're having fun. Um, so, again, just thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I absolutely love you on the show. I think your acting is great. You. I have to check in your other work. All right.
My name is Shane Michael Johnson. And um, you can find me at Shane underscore M underscore Johnson. And I play Cooper Sachs. And I have been having tea with Tia, although it wasn't really tea. <laughs> I mean, technically, you weren't really having tea either, but. <laughs> no, this, this, this is empty. And by the way, I feel bad because I should have had some Branson cognac or something like that. You know, some 50 brand, but all that's already gone. Hey, it's been fun. Uh, when we get back into season two of Ghosts, I'm going to have to bring you back. I'm actually just going to be, I need to do a round table with all of you. And let's I'm, just sit I'm into down. That. Okay. I'm into that. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call up all my power friends. We're like, we're going we're gonna to have a round table. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It was a blast. But I hope you have a great, great, great night. Thank you for joining. Uh, shout out to your beautiful wife, Keely. Thank you for joining. And have a great night. Bye. Good night. <laughs> Bye-bye.